I want you to imagine yourself standing in your local grocery store's fresh produce aisle. You're making a salad tonight, and you have found two beautifully red, ripe tomatoes. They look identical, but you notice that one of them has an organic certification label, and it's a little bit more expensive. You might think to yourself, well, why? Is it different? Now, organic certification might make you believe that this is better for the environment, that this is the sustainable choice. But organic produce releases far more CO2 emissions than the conventional counterpart. Therefore, organic farming is not the sustainable choice. Why? Well, organic farming must use organic fertilizers. And what is organic fertilizers? Well, it's poop. It's cow poop, it's chicken poop, really any sort of livestock poop. This poop contains a lot of key nutrients that plants need for growth. And a nicer word for this poop is manure. So it could be in the case of the tomato that it needs three parts nitrogen, one part phosphorus, and two parts potassium. Now, unfortunately, the nutrients that are found in the manure really depends on what the animal has been eating. So in this case, it could be that it's two parts nitrogen, two parts phosphorus, and one part potassium. So the plant does get some nutrients, and it will produce some tomatoes. For conventional farming, farmers are allowed to use what's called synthetic fertilizers. These are exactly the same key nutrients that are found in the manure, but instead they come in the pure form. They're not all jumbled up with other things. And that means the farmer can take the manure and dose with synthetic fertilizers in order to get exactly the right nutrients that the plant need. And that means that the farmer can grow a bigger plant that produces more tomatoes. But what does this have to do with sustainability and mature emissions? Well, we're in London today, so let's consider the case of England and Wales. Then the government here was to decide all farmers have to switch to organic farming only. They are no longer allowed to use synthetic fertilizers. The total agricultural output of England and Wales would decrease by 40%. In order for people not to starve, they would have to import food. And that means that somewhere else on the planet, someone was making a new supply. We had to cut down a lot of trees in order to plant new fields and grow this food. And trees are the cheapest and easiest way we know how to sequester carbon. That is why organic farming is not sustainable, because it comes at the cost of increased afforestation. Now, there is a lot of good things about organic farming, such as the reduced use of herbicides and pesticides. But from a pure CO2 perspective, organic farming releases more CO2. Organic farming is not a sustainable choice. Now, unfortunately, we actually have a real world example with this. So in May 2021, the Sri Lankan government decided to ban the import of synthetic fertilizers. And that meant that the farmers had to use what was available, which was manure. And as we know from the tomato, if milk, that means that the agricultural output decreased. Vegetable growth decreased by 57 percent per acre. The food inflation rate went up 94 percent. Think of your own full food budget at home. You have a set amount of money you spend to buy a set of food feed everybody. In the case of the Sri Lankan people, that said amount of money could now only buy half as much food. Many people could not afford this. Many people starved. Luckily, just six months later, in November 2021, the Sri Lankan government revoked the ban with a damage and authority to die. The poverty in the country had doubled, and the economy took a devastating blow. I say in light of this, we can all see we need synthetic fertilizers in order to <laughs> feed our current global population. So let's talk about synthetic fertilizers. I'm going to focus on nitrogen-based synthetic fertilizers because nitrogen is one of the most important nutrients for plant life. 
So the way that we generate nitrogen fertilizers today is via something called a Haber Bush process. This is a process that takes nitrogen and hydrogen and converts it to ammonia and H3, a nitrogen based fertilizer. Now, this process requires high temperature and high pressure in order to get the chemical reactions to happen. And that means you have to reinforce everything and to withstand these conditions. And there's a lot of safety involved, so it occurs in huge centralized facilities. This process is so important that today it supports 40 to 60 percent of the entire agricultural sector. To put that into perspective, I've been told we're 100 people here today. If it was not for the Haberbush process, 50 of us would not be alive. That is how important this process is. It supports our modern society. Unfortunately, there is also some issues. So the way that we generate the hydrogen today is via fossil fuels. And that means the Haberbush process releases half a gigaton of CO2 every year. That's more than the annual emissions of the UK. And you might see this and think to yourself, hold on, I've heard of being hydrogen. And you're absolutely right. We could take water, H2O, and split it to hydrogen and oxygen. We know how to do this. We have this technology. But fossil fuels are cheaper. Big industry is not going to make the change to green technologies unless there is political insight to do so. But there's another problem as well. As I mentioned, have a bush process is a huge centralized facilities. Farmers very rarely live right next to these facilities, which means there's transport, but also releases CO2. And farmers typically live in very remote regions, so the CO2 emissions from the transport can be significant. And what I just described here is called a supply chain. And supply chains have external effects. We most recently saw that the war in Ukraine that a huge supply of nitrogen fertilizer disappeared. But at the mad same, with the supply growing down. And that means that prices went up, and they really went up. Farmers had to pay four times what they used to pay in order to get the same amount of nitrogen fertilizer that they needed. And many of them couldn't afford this, so many of them grew less crops because they didn't have the fertilizer they needed, and that led to food shortages. Yes. We need synthetic fertilizers in order to feed our global population, but the production of them releases CO2, the transportation of them releases CO2, and the whole supply chain is weak to external geopolitical events. Luckily, there are solutions. There are many very smart scientists, academics, entrepreneurs, engineers who are working on this problem. There's new processes coming up showing that we can take certain microbes and spread them out on the field with the plants. And these microbes will take air and convert it to usable forms of nitrogen for the plants to uptake. That means farmers can grow the same amount of crops but use less fertilizers if coupled with these microbial processes. And for the fertilizer that they still need to supply to this, there's also a new technology coming out. We see that we can use electricity instead of pressure and temperature to make this chemical reaction. And that means you can do it very small scale. You can fit it into a shipping container that can stand out at the farm, generating nitrogen fertilizer on demand using just air, water, and electricity. And if the electricity supplied to this process is renewable, the whole process is CO2 neutral. This gives the farmer a sustainable fertilizer and it gives the farmer resiliency to the supply chain because he or she now controls the production that sells. So this is fantastic. And you might think to yourself, well, great, but I'm no farmer and I'm no fertilizer producer. What can I do? I hope you think of this the next time you're standing in your local grocery source fresh produce aisle. Instead of buying organic, buy local and buy seasonal whenever possible. This comes with less CO2 emissions we transport. It doesn't come at the cost of deforestation elsewhere. We need climate policies in order to force big industry to change 
to more sustainable technologies. And we need to change the definition of organic farming. We still want the good parts, such as the reduced use of herbicides and pesticides, but we want to allow the farmers to take the manure and tweak the ratios by adding synthetic fertilizers and maybe coupling it with those microbial processes in order to get a truly sustainable product. We can each have an impact in this world. And we can do this by voting for politicians who will enforce these changes. We need to show that we as consumers care about this. And every single choice we make every day has an impact, whether it's on the ballot or if it's in your grocery store. So please think of this the next time you're buying a tomato. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.